happy that you're here today. Be happy that I'm I'm very happy that I'm able to talk to you and able to spread energy and swap energy with you and just have everybody listening. Hey Amen. Thank you for those words of encouragement. So I know we're going through a, a global pandemic at this current moment. How have you been adjusting and adapting to this new norm? Uh, as far as the social distance, I've always been a social distance kind of person. I'm a very introvert. So that part hasn't really been uh, a new norm to me. I think the only thing that I have been having to get adjusted to is how everybody else has adjusted to it, uh, and it hasn't really been that hard. I'm blessed enough to have been healthy throughout the pandemic, and I know people have been going through the hardest times that they've been going through, and I'm just to have a, a smooth ride so far. Uh, I've had my first daughter. I got married. Uh, a lot of things have been up for me, so I, I, I just I don't take a day for granted. I'm just thankful. Hey, congratulations on everything you're doing and as well as your marriage and having, um, you know, a, a child. So how do you balance having family life and your MMA career? Uh, it comes by nature. I'm a family guy. Uh, I'm a very docile person at heart. Uh, fighting is just something that I feel like I was born to do, but I don't allow it to become who I am. Fighting is just another branch of who I am as a person. Uh, but it's not my full personality. So I go to the gym, I punch people in the face, I come home, I cook dinner, uh, and I spend time with my, my daughter and my wife. At what age did you want to uh, become an MMA fighter? Uh, I started fighting when I was 18. I got kicked out of college because I couldn't afford it. And when I came back to Vegas, my brother took me to the MMA gym. I sparred uh, an Olympic pool. Ended up doing really well, and I never left the gym after that. Now I know you have an upcoming fight this week. How excited are you actually? To, um, and you know, how excited are you with fans being in the stands as well as fighting your opponent? Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm not gonna pay attention to the fans. Uh, I I lock in. I'm I'm a very zoned in kind of person. So when it's time to go, I kind of just pay attention to me and my host. Uh, it's always me versus myself. So my opponent isn't even there it's like me fighting a reflection of myself and just fighting the things that I go through on a daily basis and I just happen to do it in the cage in front of a thousand people and I'm happy that fans are finally able to to be there again so they can experience it uh, because I do plan on putting it on the show like I always do but as far as my experience I don't feel like I'm going to really notice to be honest with you so fan, for fans that have never seen you fight what should they expect in this fight as well as just you as a fighter, because we already know, me personally, since I watch you, you are a striker. So what can fans see that have never paid attention to you? Uh, I, I'm excited. I'm excited. I come to fight. Uh, I try to get a finish every time. I'm one of those guys that come and perform, and no matter what, I'm, I'm going to come out there and I'm going to show out. Uh, I put a lot of dedication into the sport. I put a lot of hard work and sweat into the sport, and every time I go out there, I go out and celebrate. I go out and celebrate my hard work and dedication. So I know everybody speaks about the progress and the progressional stage of, you know, success. What does that mean to you that you can be an inspiration for your community? Uh, it means a lot. It means the world to me. Ever, ever since I started doing social media and start uh, embracing myself, I have very bad, I have very bad social anxiety. So ever since I've started embracing that and become the outlet for other people that are like me, I've noticed that I am an inspiration to people and I am an outlet to people and it it, 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 it drives me. It wakes me up in the morning. Uh, I've never been that person or I never view myself as that, per as that person. So, yeah, it means the world to me. What does it mean to you that you're seeing other athletes such as yourself, Naomi Osaka um, and Simone Biles, um, just a few of them just talking about mental health? Uh, it, it's an honor to be in that category. I think it's a very important, especially when it comes to athletes, because we are a subdivision that is that is pushed to the side when it comes to mental health, because we are seeing fighters, we are seeing warriors, gladiators. We're supposed to go out and be emotionalists. We're seen as as we just go out and punch people, and it's never like that for the most part. I know for me, I'm a very uh, emotional and tuned guy. I'm very into my emotions. Uh, I know myself very well, and I just 
take it as an honor that I'm able to be one a part of that community that is loud and proud about my mental health and shows how important it is because this game is 80% mental, 20% physical. What advice can you give people that actually want to step into MMA and want to get to Bellator or the UFC? Uh, be dedicated. Dedication is the key when it comes to this sport. Uh, wake up every morning, go to the gym, even if you don't want to. Get up and just try to make yourself 1% better. Uh, I don't think the goal should ever be Bellator or UFC. I think the goal should just be being your best version of who you are and opportunities will find you. I don't think you should go out and look for opportunities. I don't think you go out and for promotions to find you. I think you should go out and try and be who you are and perform and everything will fall into place. Now you uh now this week you will be fighting Janelle who is a vicious striker as well as he's a, a great ground and pound guy. What makes him so dangerous and what do you think you need to do in order for you to come out with a victory this week? Mm, uh if you think he's dangerous, that's all that matters to you because life is about perspective. Uh, I think it's all about me going out there and performing. Me versus me. Amen to that. Um, and my last question to you, what advice can you give people about um, overcoming ad adversity, overcoming obstacles, and just making their dreams happen? Uh, focus on one day at a time. Focus on you. Don't focus on your circumstances. Look at life in a perspective lens. Uh, it's not about what happens to you, it's what happens for you. The thing that you think that is a setback or the most devastating thing that's ever happened usually is the catapult to put you into the next body of your life and become the person that you need to be to be where you want to be. Amen. And before I let you go, where can my viewers and my fans actually find your story and follow your journey? Uh, Keith Lee underscore 125 or Keith underscore Lee 125, I'm sorry. Uh, I do have a I would say a pretty big following on TikTok at the moment. Uh, I do cooking and family content. Uh, and Instagram, the same thing. Keep underscore Lee 125. Thank you for joining me. I, it's or been a pleasure with speaking with you. Um, everybody, this is Fago Franklin III. You can follow me on my social media, which is SuperJournalist87 on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Fago Franklin III. Or either you can hit your Google search button and type in Fago Franklin III, and you see all the interviews that I have done with your favorite sports athletes, um, celebrities, as well as media personalities. Thank you for joining me again, Keith, and it's been a pleasure, my friend. Good luck. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Yes, sir. You too.